everybody. Welcome back to Marie's Kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. It has been a while since I've had a chance to film. Just been so busy with family, my husband's birthdays, the holidays, traveling, but now we're back and I'm excited to share some new quick and easy dinners for the new year. So that's what we're starting with today. We're gonna to make my family's favorite dinner, which is Sloppy Joe's. I would love to hear your thoughts on Sloppy Joe's. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you think you might try this one? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's get started. So first up is an onion, and I generally store these in the pantry in just a dry, dark spot. But if you can remember to pop a few in your refrigerator before you need to use them, that will neutralize the compounds that make you cry when you cut onions. So if you, have, if you cry a lot when you cut onions, try refrigerating the onion before you cut it. That really helps me. So real quick, I like to cut off that, and, and then we'll just go right down the middle here on that stem end. Take off the papery layer on top, peel that right off. And then we're just going to, you don't have to do this fast, but you're just gonna slice down, not going all the way through to the stem, just going almost up to it. Okay, so we'll cut horizontally through there. And then cut straight down like this, and that gives you diced onion. It doesn't matter if they're not all exactly the same size, you just want some kind of small pieces of onion there. And once you get to the end, you can chop up these side pieces and add those in. There we go. And we might as well do the other half. Just move that over to a bowl. Next up is the green bell pepper, and I'm gonna show you how to cut that as well. What I like to do is go down the side here. You just cut one piece off to kind of see where you are, what, what else you have going on inside, because this seed area can sometimes be bigger, can sometimes be smaller. So now that I can see where it is, I'm just gonna cut around it like that and around it like that. And if you have a few seeds, that's okay. You can just swipe those out. Now, to cut the bell pepper. Uh, generally, it's a little easier to cut on the inside because the skin is a little bit tough. It gives a little more resistance. So you just, you can cut here on the inside. And if you have a little white in there, you can cut that out, it doesn't matter. And we'll just cut some strips here. And then I'm just gonna dice those up into kind of bite-sized pieces. So again, we'll do some strips. There's no rush unless people are hungry. <laughs> then maybe there would be a rush, but generally um, there's no rush. And this can be something that you do ahead. If you like to meal prep, you can chop your bell pepper and onions and have these ready to go. Pop that in with our onion. And now we're ready to head over to the stove. First up, we've got a nice large pan here. I'm gonna set the stove to about medium medium high heat. Then we'll put some olive oil. We'll add our onions and bell pepper right in there. And we're just gonna cook these until kind of tender, maybe five minutes. While our onions and peppers are cooking, I am going to tell you the hardest part about this recipe. The most difficult part is opening your jar of barbecue sauce. I think my hands have just get weaker every year <laughs> and I usually have a jar opener, but I can't find it. So, okay, Seinfeld reference here. <laughs> okay, I found it. So we'll put this on the jar and this should help get a nice grip. Ah, oh, we got it, <laughs> thank goodness. What we're using here, instead of making the sauce from scratch, which you can do, um, I just prefer, this is so much easier, it's one jar, it's really easy. You just find a tangy barbecue sauce that you like and just use that rather than making the sauce from scratch every time. Okay, so we've got our peppers and onions here cooked nice and tender. We can add a little salt and then We'll grab our ground beef and cook that separately. 
This is a grass-fed ground beef. It's 93% lean. It's got a good flavor. And so this is what I usually use. I try to have like one or two of these in my refrigerator every week because I always end up using it for sloppy joes, tacos, meatballs. We usually have at least two of those every week. Now we'll turn this back to medium high and just chop that up into some small pieces. If I seem a little frazzled, it's just because I have to pick up my kids in 30 minutes. So trying to do this real quick. But that's the great thing about this recipe is that it is so quick and easy and I'll have dinner ready when the kids get home if they're hungry. While that's browning, I do want to show you how to make pink pickled onions. And these are one of my favorite little toppings, condiments. You can serve it on salads, tacos, delicious on like pulled pork or chicken, and they're colorful. You know, not a lot of food is pink, so it's kind of fun to have this pop of bright pink on your table. So we've got a red onion here. Same as last time, we're gonna cut off this end, then cut through the stem. Set this aside, we'll pull off the paper. So now we've got our red onion here and we're just going to slice this into some thin rings. I like to do them pretty thin. And then here's the hack, it's so cool. What you do is you take some leftover pickle juice. This is a jar of bread and bread pickles that we really like. Save the juice. So you can see this one's not quite empty, but, but you can see all that extra juice left in there. Well, you can save that and use that to make your own pickled onions. I used to make them from scratch using just vinegar and salt and sugar, and that's also very easy, but this is even easier. So we're just gonna use the pickle juice. Just gonna pour that right into just a shallow pot here. Now what we'll do is add our onions to the pickle juice. We're gonna throw that on the stove, bring it to a boil, and then immediately turn the fire off. Let the onions sit in that hot pickle juice and it'll soften them and it'll bring out the color. And so then you have these pickled bright peak onions. You pour them right back in the jar, store them in the fridge, and you have those available ready for topping whatever you want. I can't wait to hear if you make these. They are just such a favorite of our family. I'm excited for you to try them. I'm gonna do one more half of onion here. And then throw all of these in the pot. And then we'll pop over to the stove and heat this up. Okay, the ground beef looks good. It's nice and brown. I know this can get a little controversial, but I do not drain my ground beef. A lot of people do. My family never did, so it's just not a habit for me. If you're using a really kind of um, fatty ground beef and you want to drain some of that grease off, feel free to do so. This is a fairly lean beef, and so I don't really have a lot of liquid or fat to drain off. So I am not going to drain it, but you can if you like. And um, you can also leave me a comment and tell me why I'm wrong if you like. <laughs> now we can add our onions and bell peppers right back to the beef. And that is looking good. All right, so what we're gonna do now is add our barbecue sauce. And I'm just gonna pour about a cup of sauce into here and we'll pour that right into our ground beef and peppers. Give this a stir. Ugh, I wish you were here to smell it. Everything smells so good. It's this sweet, tangy sauce. So much flavor. Now to sort of elevate the flavor, I'm gonna use a, about an eighth or a quarter teaspoon of garam marsala and that is a spice that is commonly used in Indian food, Pakistani cuisine. So this is a great one to just keep in your pantry. You probably won't use it that often, but it's a combination of spices, cumin, coriander, I think cloves. It just has a really interesting kind of earthy flavor that goes really well with this sweet tangy sauce. I'll we'll turn the fire down here. This is plenty cooked. Mm. Oh my gosh. And you can smell these interesting spices, it just kind of adds something, it elevates the sloppy joes, it makes it more interesting for your taste buds. So I'm always looking for ways to do that. And of course, if you don't have it, it's optional. I just like to add it. And then we'll give this a stir and this is ready to go. Looks delicious. 
Now we'll serve that on some buns or if you're looking to do something you know, less carbs, you can serve it in an iceberg lettuce wrap or bib lettuce leaf. I love to eat it that way with some of my pink pickled onions on top. And speaking of those, let's check on the onions. Oh, here we go. You can see we brought it to a boil and then we're just going to turn the heat right off and then just let the onions sit in that warm water for about five minutes and that will take some of the bite out of the onion, that real harsh, you know, spicy onion bite. It takes a little bit of that out, but it doesn't make them soft and mushy. You still want these onions to have some crunch, like a pickle. You want a nice kind of crunchy pickle. So that's what we're doing with these pickled onions. And we'll just let these sit here for a few minutes and then to store them, I just pour it right back in the jar and pop this in the fridge. All right, I've got to go get my kids, but thanks so much for joining us. Today we made this easy and delicious sloppy joe mix. Throw that on a bun or wrap it up in some lettuce with some pink pickled onions and dinner is served. I really hope you get to try this one. If you do, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. It's a small thing, but it means so much to me and also to YouTube. That's how they decide who else sees this video. And if you haven't yet, also subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming up with easy recipes just like this, and I don't want you to miss any of them. For this recipe and more, head over to my website, mariesaba.com. There you can go and print out this recipe and all my recipes, put them in a notebook and make your very own Marie's Kitchen Cookbook for free. My goal is to give you some really easy recipes that turn out great every time so you can build some confidence in the kitchen and feel really inspired to share good food with people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you.